In this episode, I'm going to be talking all about gut health. Just having a walk with my kids in the evening, thought it'd be an opportunity to stop and talk to you all about gut health, something I'm really excited about. And it's a topic within lifestyle medicine that is growing every day. There's new evidence and new research, and I'm continually reading and I can't kind of almost keep up. But what I'm gonna do is take everything I know and filter it down so you can get a good understanding. So a microbe is anything that is too small to see with the eye. And usually we're talking about bacteria when we're talking about the gut. And the microbiome is the collection of genes or the function of these bacteria bacteria and microbes uh, within the body. 99% are found within the gut. So the human microbiota is made of 100 trillion cells, outnumbering human cells in our body 10 to 1. So if you think about it that way, we are more microbe than we are human. I mean, that's amazing, right? What's wrong? You got a nettle sting? Oh. So we as humans, have 23,000 genes. I think that sounds like quite a lot. Until you think it's the same amount as an earthworm. And then when you think that this microbiome has 200 times the amount of genes that the humans do. They are living inside us and they need us to feed and survive, but we need them to feed and survive. And they actually make us a much more complex and interesting species altogether. So we used to just think about the bacteria as the bad bacteria. Actually, this only accounts for about 1%. That's things like E. coli, Salmonella, Campylobacter. That's what I think I know, used to know about as a doctor. I didn't used to know about all the good stuff, but that makes 99%. We should know more about that, right? And that's where all this new evidence is coming from, learning all about the importance of this role. So much so that scientists and doctors are now learning we should be treating this gut microbiome as like a new organ that we've discovered. So why should I care about my gut microbiome? Well, you should care because they have four key roles within the body that I'll talk a little bit more individually about, but they include nutrition, immunity, behavior, and disease. All huge things that we all care about. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the role of the gut microbiome in nutrition. We know that it helps digest our food. In fact, it provides a third of all essential vitamins and nutrients. That's amazing. It also helps break down complex molecules from meats and vegetables. It sends signals to our brain to let us know when we're hungry or when we're full. And there's loads of exciting research all about the role of the gut microbiome in weight loss. I know a lot of people will be interested in this. Studies show that if you give mice a certain type of bacteria, they will remain more lean than the mice who didn't have the bacteria. Also, if you give mice bacteria from an obese human, those mice, you guessed it, become obese. And if you give them bacteria from a lean human, can you guess? Yes, they remain lean. So how does the gut microbiome affect our behavior? Well, the so-called gut-brain axis is very well established now in science. And moreover, we're starting to think about mental health problems as not just a disease caused by genetic vulnerability and psychological stresses, but actually a whole body inflammatory response related to the immune system. And we know that some gut bacteria have anti-inflammatory properties, such as bifidobacteria and lactobacillus, and these can help dampen that immune response. This is leading to research into a potential type of therapy for these kind of mental health problems, known as psychobiotics. They appear to work in the same way as traditional chemical antidepressants, but just in a different location. So that's really, really exciting and interesting research coming forward. Immunity. So there's loads more allergies in recent years. And one theory is, is because children who have altered gut bacteria are more at risk of allergies. This is also linked to hygiene hypothesis. Also, your immune system is really clever and looks after your gut bacteria. And we've recently discovered the reverse is true. So your gut bacteria is able to release pro-inflammatory cells, not just in the gut, but all over the body. And this contributes to systemic autoimmune diseases. Disease. I don't have enough time to go through all the evidence about how the gut microbiome is linked to a whole host of diseases, but I will tell you there is lots of good evidence linked to liver disease, inflammatory bowel disease, Alzheimer's, colitis associated cancers, obesity, type 2 diabetes, the list goes on. 
Okay, so what can you do to improve your gut health? You're probably gagging to know at this point. Well, I'm going to give you the four P's. Probiotics, prebiotics, polyphenols and poo. Or if you're American, you poop. Prebiotics are like food for your gut. They're specifically fermented dietary fibre and you're going to find it in all kinds of colourful fruit and veg. So one thing you must do when you finish watching this video is eat loads of colourful varied veg. If you do nothing else, do that and your gut will be happier. Probiotics are actual live bacteria and microorganisms that you can ingest. You can find these in products such as kefir, sauerkraut, kombucha. I'm actually making my own kefir and I might show you a little bit about that another week. Polyphenols are compounds found in whole plant foods that can help protect against diet associated diseases. They help our gut bacteria make good gut bacteria. And I like to find mine in red wine and dark chocolate amongst other things. Poo. So when I'm talking about poo, I'm talking about Fecal Microbiota Transplantation, or FMT. This has already been used for patients with inflammatory bowel disease, and there's loads of new evidence coming out about how it may help patients such as metabolic syndrome, who are given FMT from a lean donor and have, for example, increased insulin sensitivity. But don't go buying any of these so-called crapsules from the internet anytime soon. There's a lot more research that needs to be done in this area. So what else can we all be doing to try and improve our gut microbiome? Well, where possible, we should be encouraging normal vaginal deliveries rather than cesarean sections. This is because we think that the fetus is sterile within the womb and coming down the vaginal canal, they pick up loads and loads of good bacteria to set them on a positive road ahead. And breastfeeding, same reason, get loads and loads of good bacteria from breastfeeding, where possible. If your child drops their dummy on the floor, just suck it and put them back in their mouth. That's probably going to be better for them and allow some muddy play. Other things we can do, we can reduce the amount of antibacterial spray and soap we use, try and reduce the amount of antibiotics we use, and consider using a probiotic supplement if you have to take some antibiotics. We can reduce the amount of processed foods, we have artificial sweeteners and vegetable oils, stick to kind of more a plant-based diet, and we can try and get more sleep and less stress. Easier said than done, I know, and I'll talk about that in another episode. So where does this lead us for the future of healthcare and the gut microbiome? Well, I think there are going to be huge changes ahead. I think just like you go and get a blood test when you go and see the doctor, you'll probably get your gut tested too. Because we've all got different gut bacteria, so it's going to have to lead to an individualised, personalised plan. We know that it, the gut microbiome can affect our metabolism of certain drugs, but that affects different people differently. So I think the future will be very different and it's very exciting to see what's going to happen. So that's it for the gut microbiome. Um, there's a lot of good evidence coming out. A lot of it's animal-based at the moment, but some really good human studies coming out. A lot of this information I've got from amazing journals such as Cell. So this is completely science and evidence-based stuff. And stay tuned because I'm going to be talking about intermittent fasting for my next video.